Hello, Needham, and welcome to this November edition of What's My House Worth? My name is Rob Tickton. This is Ryan McDonald. We are with Hawthorne Real Estate. We are a design build firm. We also provide real estate brokerage services, and sometimes we're just about everything. Ryan, wouldn't you say? We do it all, Rob. We're also going to be playing a little game today. One of us had dental work this morning just two hours ago from Novocaine. Let's see if you can figure out who that person was. But first, we're going to talk a little real estate. Let's do that. Yeah, sound yeah, why, good? Why not? Why yeah. not? Before one of us falls asleep. That's right. Um, or before one of you falls asleep. <laughs> We're, of course, going to be talking about the October data in this show. And so, as we always do, let's begin by looking at the stat sheet. And Ryan, as you look at those October numbers, anything jump out? Well, there aren't very many sales this month, Rob. There's yeah. only 15. So, uh, we should have a lot to talk about about these 15 sales. We may have to hover around them a little longer than normal. Or talk slower. Right, which shouldn't be a problem for you. Oh, yes. Oh, I let the cat out of the bag, didn't no, I? That's not cool. <laughs> Go ahead. So the average list price this past month was just over a million at 1.082, and the average sales price just under that at 1.069. So still strong at 98.7% of lists and 97.8% of original list, which, as we know, is, is a better metric. Well, those are down from the, from the September sales where that were still remember they were at 102 percent of, of list and 101 percent of original list, which was staggering. And we knew probably wouldn't be able to sustain yeah, itself. Right, exactly. Also coming down is the average sale price per square foot down to 360 from 369 in September. Mm -hmm. And the days on market, though, however, have decreased to 45 days from 51. And as we see in October 2013, we had 24 homes sold. So our number of 15 this month, Rob, is definitely down from previous years. Down from previous years, down from previous months, and also down from October of 2013. Talking about down from previous months, we're now going to take a look at that graph that shows us the previous six months, including the last one, October. And that is the curve we would expect to see heading into the fall as a result of the summer market. Correct, right? It is. It is. But it's just, you know, you definitely... We expect to see that downward trend, but dipping, you know, into that 15 range, Rob, is, you know, it's, it's kind of like uncharted waters a little bit. Right. Ideally, we'd like to see that level off a little bit once it gets to the 23, because right. uh, A, it shows a healthy real estate market, and B, it enables us to give us some time to be able to talk about some things during our <laughs> half-hour show. Right. More importantly. Right. October historical. So uh, how does this October stack up against the previous Octobers and... We had a nice little thing going there, and October 14 had to ruin it on us, right. Ryan. Yeah, I mean, we had to climb. I mean, so when you really look at our 15 sales, I mean, it obviously pales in comparison to last year, but in previous years, I mean, 17, and then you had 14, 14, and 11. So the 15, just in, you know, taking a broad stroke look at it, really isn't that low compared to the historicals. Just when you're measuring off of last year's data, it definitely feels like we're getting shortchanged a little bit. Right. Broad, uh, the uh, bronze medalist for the last six years, if you will, the yeah. third highest total. Uh, before we jump into the individual sales, we're going to um, kind of move sideways here a little bit and uh, take a look at something that we've talked about before. We've alluded to it on the show. I've said that maybe I'd put it together. Well, yeah. I've done it for this month. And we've talked quite a bit at length over the past year about how the uh, sales price per square foot seems to feel as though it's working its way up. So what we've done is put something together that shows a rolling 12 months, that's the previous 12 months, sales price per square foot, that's in the blue, up against the previous 12 months before that, Ryan, which would be the orange sales price per square foot. So what we're seeing here is that month over month for the last 12 months, the average sales price per square foot is up over where it was a year ago. Yeah, so I mean, you know, we talk about the, maybe the market softening a little bit, and you might see that in terms of some of the sales volume, but looking in the valuation department, it's staggering. Month over month, we're, we're just seeing the values just beat the previous year, and in some cases, like when you look at April, beat April. them handily. Yeah, and I think it's an indicator that you know, we've talked a little bit about how it's been a really strong market now for seemingly a long time. And I think that that proves that, that you know, we're looking about probably a year, 18 months that this market has really kind of jumped up to a higher level. And thus far, it feels as though it's been able to stay there, whether it continues to stay there, you know, in the, in the next 12 months, that remains to be seen. There is one indicator we're going to get to later in the show that says maybe it won't be quite where it is. Huh. Yeah, I know. It's a little, that's a tease. I don't remember that from rehearsal. We call that a tease in the biz. <laughs> uh, I got a few surprises for this 
for this show, Ryan. Oh, this is going to be awesome. So uh, speaking of awesome, we're going to start looking at the listings, the 15 listings that sold in Needham per MLS, that single family, in October. And we're going to start over at a pretty nice location, Ryan. Yep, down a road. 14 down a road. What can you tell us about this one other than the fact it's right next to Hoover? It is next to Hoover. This one started out a little high, but quickly adjusted its price. Started out at 650 also had a less than market agent commission in the original offering. The price came down, the commission percentage went up. Not to suggest that that's why it sold, but mm -hmm. it certainly can't hurt. This is about 1,900 square feet, three beds, two baths. Assessed value is about 560, so it stands to reason that if this had come out and, you know, closer in that neighborhood, maybe they would have gotten more than 547.5 in a shorter time period. So it just illustrates the importance of proper and appropriate pricing. Yeah, $100,000, that's a big drop from what the original list was. I do like how in the description it says it's a, a cozy living but with space to spread out in. Yeah. I like how you have the back-to-back -back opposite words. Right. You don't see that very often on a listing sheet. Out in. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, yeah I liked it too. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Good for us. Uh, I'll continue to look for that in future shows for our viewers. It didn't have any bearing on the real estate value of the property. It was just, it's just fun for us. We don't think. Right. <laughs> 68 Kimball Street is next up on the list. This house was listed for 615. Five days later, it goes under agreement, sells for 615. This is one house from Lincoln. Yes, and this one, I mean, you can't really complain about a house that sells in five days for its asking price. I think the one thing you do notice about this is its, its immediate proximity, not only to the drugstore, but to the giant building that surrounds the drugstore, which, which we refer to as the hospital. Right. Um, so it's definitely affected from a location perspective by you know, the, the, the hospital and that I think probably may have, have turned off some potential developers and maybe some, somebody who might have driven up that, that property value. Because you're talking about a big lot in a great in-town location um, and selling for the low sixes. So I think it certainly has something to do with the proximity to the hospital. Right, you mentioned big lot, 12,000 square feet to be exact. Oil, this house was heated, but uh, there is gas on the street, so that's always a plus. And uh, you had the uh, the sold as is, which means right. I mean, it was know, taken. You don't know what you're in for yeah. you know, when you walk in. Right. This is definitely one that was that was teed up for a developer or a homeowner looking to do a renovation to a property. It certainly was not going to remain a six hundred fifteen thousand dollar home. Right. No interior pictures on the listing sheet. That usually is the telltale sign that you're not going to be pleasantly surprised when and you walk the, in. And you notice the little uh, the little designation at the bottom. So it's just the that's the, the agent grabbing the assessor card photo. Correct. Which is, yeah, hey, you know, everyone's got busy days. You might as well just get it done quickly. Correct. And it still ended up selling for what it was listed for anyway. Perfect. We have a lot of streets for neighborhoods that we talk about on the show. Do we have one for the neighborhood that 9 Lincoln Street is located in? No. Uh, not that we know of? No, I don't. I'm, I'm not aware. So if, if, again, as in previous shows, if you do know the name of the neighborhood or if you are in the neighborhood and are looking to claim a name for your neighborhood, please let us know. Yes, we support that. Uh, Lakin, of course, connects Ardmore and Taylor. Mm -hmm. Just a short stroll to Elliott. Yep, exactly. This is walking distance to Elliott. This is a home. It's a move-in condition, Nine Lakin, a little bit dated, but, you know, just drop your bags, move in. It's it's very close to Elliott School, has a, has a nice yard. It's almost 16,000 square feet. I think that, you know, maybe the two things that jumped out at me that aren't sort of the best scenarios are one, it's, a, it's on septic. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a sewer in the street, but that's not an inexpensive connection. And two, it's, uh, it's oil. So you have septic and oil, which are you know, two of the, the, the features of, that Needham is trying to get away from. Um, but this is an area where there's been a lot of redevelopment, uh, some nice new homes in this, but this with big lots and really close to Elliott. Uh, as a homeowner, do you think that they should have, I'm sure they at least considered the possibility of connecting the town sewer. Do you think that would have been a wise investment? Do you think you recognize that on the back end when you go to sell your house? That's a good question. I mean, this one, just looking at it on paper, I mean, it's a split level that's move in, as I mentioned, but, you know, not updated. Mm -hmm. So I'd say the homeowner probably did okay. I mean, they, they sold it in nine days for, you know, just under asking. So it doesn't appear that the septic was a big problem. And, you know, it's always something that the new owner can take on if they're going to be there long term, which they, they probably will consider. Right. But you probably have more buyers in the mix if you do connect to the Absolutely. public. Absolutely. Um, across from Harris Ave, right near the uh, train, you'll find our next listing. That is uh, 473 Great Plain Avenue. Other than the fact that, you know, it's on Great Plain, a little bit of a busier road, but yep. still a good location in the sense that it, the proximity to it's the convenient. train. Convenient. Convenient location. 
Uh, this house, interestingly, Ryan, I don't know if you're aware of this, was on the market sure was. in 2011 for yep. 599000 It does not sell. Nope. And here we are just three short years later, and it sells for $726,000. Yeah, and one little thing that I noticed just sort of to tack on to what you're talking about is that the stats for the house were different in 2011. So oh, the it was listed as 2153 as far as the square footage compared to 2058, neither of which agreed a public record. Right, but that's, uh, a, that's a difference of 95 square feet, if I'm not mistaken, Ryan. Something like that. And okay. then you have a different size lot. So the lot actually grew in since 2011, and the house shrunk. Hmm. So go figure that one. Maybe they shaved a little room off the house. Right, and right, and just made it part of the land. <laughs> right. So it's just, I mean, I think the lesson learned is you just always need to, to, to delve into, you know, what you're buying as the, as the, the, the buyer. You want to know your... You know, what's the source of the living area? Do you want to see a plot plan if one's available? Um, and these are usually things that you can acquire or obtain uh, relatively easily. Your agent can help you with that. Right, and I'd be willing to bet the listing agent was prepared to answer those questions when this house went on the market. Yeah, probably. The 2014 listing agent. Yeah, I would imagine. Quarter of Great Plain Avenue in Prospect is uh, where you'll bump into our next listing. That would be located at 70 Prospect Street. This one sells for $732,000. Ryan, $20,000 price reduction after just 13 days, and yeah. it gets it done. Yeah, we always like to see that. We just love to see that. Yeah, why not? You know, sometimes houses aren't always so easy to price. We always just sort of talk about how important pricing is, but let's not gloss over the fact that it's not... You know, it's not, it's not easy all the time. But you do, in a strong market, you do recognize fairly quickly when your price is working against you. So it's it, there's a lot to be said for reacting to the market, making the appropriate price reductions when necessary, and then seeing the results very quickly, and that's good. I mean, this is a Dutch colonial. It's a, it's a common style in this area of town. This is one of our, our more underrated walk-to-town locations, too. We, yes, we talk yep. about this yep. area of town frequently. It's very, very walkable. It's, it's So as you're heading out of town upgrade plan out towards Wellesley, this is going to be on your right pretty Correct. quickly. You're going to come up on Prospect pretty quickly. West of um, Highland Avenue, if you will. There it's you go. Uh, the lot size, 7,800 square feet. It's not a, not a huge not lot. Huge, no. And um, two car detached garage though, which is nice. Yep. Yeah. And this one sold in 2010 for 614,000. Um, so nice appreciation in a short period of time. Yes, or as you might say, good for them. Good for them. 50 Grassmere Road. We're going back to that unnamed neighborhood. Yep. It's just one street up from Lakin. Or would it be down from Lagan? Either Depen one? It depends on your perspective. All right. So either one. Or how, Over? or how tall you are. Oh, okay. Since I'm taller than you, I'll say one street up from Lagan. All right. All right. 13,000 square foot lot this is a big, big lot. It is. Large lot. Good lots over that, in that part of town. It's definitely one of the draws over there. And people that, people that are in this neighborhood really love this that neighborhood. That they do. Absolutely. It's, it, it's very convenient to 128 and Wellesley. It's, it's a nice little spot. It's, it's not, you know, walk to Needham Center, but it's... You know, there's nice neighborhoods over there, and you know, as you mentioned, you know, it's like a almost like a Livingston Circle community. Like people, that's right. That's people what I was really say. sort of uh, rave about living over there. And you can walk to Elliot without having to yep. go through any kind of traffic. Right. You've got that kind of Cut back through. entrance. Yep, definitely. So. I mean, I mean, this one, uh, this one sold for 488 grand back in 2001. So in almost, you know, 13 years, it's almost doubled in value, which is significant. All right, we're gonna work on coming up with a name for that neighborhood. Hopefully, have that um, by the end of the show. Yeah. That's, next month. that's aggressive. Yeah. Okay. Next month's fine. 24 Julia Road. We're going to stay in Elliott. We is are. Julia Elliott? Uh, I believe I, it is. I, I, yes, I think so. Yeesh. 24 Julia Road sells for... Let's wait see. a minute. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, no. Wow, no. I apologize, that's Ryan. That's okay. That's okay. I didn't see that red font. Yeah, this is my deal of the month, Rob. Okay, let's uh, go now. Okay, so this one sells for 849000 which is over asking. Mm -hmm. It took it took a little while, 64 days to sell, but this house was a little unique in its offering in that it, it has a lower level that, that has been, for lack of a better term, homeowner. The homeowner captured one of the garage spaces, if you remember, built a little in-law suite with a kitchen down there that's sort of built into the garage, mm -hmm. um, which is undoable, but you know, it would take some work, mm -hmm. uh, and then has a walkout element to the house that... It's, a, it's an unfinished basement. He was sort of in the works finishing this space when he decided to sell. Um, and it, it, it's, he was going to design a, like a, almost like a bar down there, and it's plumbed for a bathroom. My point is that for 840 or 850, you've got some work to do to take this home, whereas you look at Grasmere and you're spending 839 
and you're done. For the same style home, with similar finishes, and you're completely finished. Right. So I just think that this one, you have maybe, and what homeowners sometimes run into is they don't necessarily have a firm grasp as to how much work and money it's going to take to take that basement into a finished state. And that, I think, should have played a little bit more of a part in a lower purchase price here. But it's a nice space. Don't get me wrong. It was just talking purely about value. Right. All right. Deal of the month. Deal for of, the deal seller, of the month. Ryan. You are on record. I am. We should have a show about our respective deals of the month. And just let the, let the sellers and buyers call in and complain. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Because I'm sure the phones would be ringing off the hook. Uh, 29 Longfellow Road is next up on our tour through Needham of homes that sold in the month of October. This is an expanded cape. Now, we have a name for this neighborhood. This is the, well, it's kind of the stepladder street. It's a stepladder street. It doesn't street. connect. It doesn't matter. I don't know. We'll take this offline. Okay. It's on the stepladder streets, and it is... I got an interesting one for you on this. You okay. ready? Yeah, go for as it. As we look on the specs there. So, this one had three beds, one and a half baths. Okay. How about this stat? In yes. the past 12 months, it was the highest selling three bed, one and a half bath in Needham. No kidding. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And and, and I can even take it a step further. So All this right. one sells for 870. The next highest selling three bed, one and a half bath in Needham was 23 Wilshire, sells for 790. Wow, so it just blew it away. Blew it away. Blew it away. To its credit, it's also the second largest three right. bed, one and a half bath to sell in the past 12 months. But, well, yeah, you got to be careful with that, because I don't know if you noticed what the GLA source was on this listing. Yep, that's called a segue, Ryan. <laughs> it's an owner. Uh. And every time you see the owner, what do you do? You check public record? You do, and what do you usually find? The, the number's different. Yes, and right. which way is it going? It's going down. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so here we've got 2142 square feet versus public records 1969. So not a huge discrepancy. Right, but but that but, but that matters. 2000 number that 2000 threshold is Absolutely. means it's a lot. a big barrier. But to the owner's credit, it worked. It did. And it even the one thing also I noticed about this is it, is it was in the listing is an average, you know, promoting the house, it says that there's a master bedroom yeah. with a nursery. Yeah. That would be perfect for a future master bath. So I wondered like like is that a is that a selling point because you're highlighting the fact that it doesn't have a master bath. Right, but that you I think it is. Okay. I mean, I it worked. It I mean, yeah. this one sold, you know, for over asking in six days. So whatever they're doing here seemed to work. It just, these were things that I, you always kind of wonder, like, do you highlight something that's not there? Because you can't, you're not going to get paid for a master bath that doesn't exist. So. Right. But the truth is, in this town, people come in here under a million thinking, you know, maybe we can spend more, buy it for less, and put some money into it to get it the way we want to get it. Right. But um, but they I'm, didn't hear. They bought it for more than any other three three bed, one and a half bath. Listen, I'm 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 uncovering all these stats, and my next question that I'm asking myself is, why is this not a deal of the month for right. the seller? Right. But he goes well, away. He gets away unscathed. Yeah, he did. Well, not really, because we've spent five minutes blasting it. But At I mean, least yeah. Yeah. we've been blasting it. We're no, just hi highlighting. It, right. Ninety-one Winding River Road is uh, close to Dover. This one. Just yes, a hop, skip, and a jump, if you will. This is a, a nice piece of land. Yeah, it is. It's an acre, and, and well-maintained acre. It's it's more than an acre. It's almost an acre and a oh, half. Oh, that's right. You're right. It's 1.4 acres. This yep. is a biggie, and it's got a nice pool. Yep. This one had it was a little bit you know a little dated in the interior. It's a it's a big cape. You're buying the land here, Ryan. It's you're buying the land, and so I should we just stop there? No, I'm just pointing it out. So you know how we talk about sometimes when you put something on a listing sheet, you're almost taking it off the table from a negotiation standpoint. Mm -hmm. Do you include an unused oil tank in that conversation? Like, can that be still be something like, hey, here's our offer, but we want you to get rid of the oil tank? Right. You know, whereas you say the doorbell doesn't work. It's like not usually like, here's our offer, but we want you to fix the doorbell. Right. Like, Why not just get rid of it and not have to worry about yeah, putting anything on the listing I, sheet? That's where I'm going with this. Because yeah, I, mean, I think you're, you not getting, you're not getting away from the oil tank, whether you put it on the listing sheet or not. Right. But... All right. Yeah, there's it's unused. Things. Was it ever used? I don't know. Maybe it's new. <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe it's just a little teeny one. It's some value. Yeah. Okay. Good questions, all of them. 123, we're going to go back to Walk to Town. You feel good about that? Sure. Some would say another underrated Walk to Town. 123 Garden Street. Uh, this one, just three in from May Street. I, I, to the credit of 123 Garden Street, it's on the market for 194 days, mm -hmm. but still sells for 96% of original list. It's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Assess value of seven twenty eight. I would say that's a pretty good sales price. One one four five. <laughs> right, right. I, and this is a nice house. I mean, it's thirty, almost thirty three hundred square feet. It's a good sized, well maintained yard. House has some updates. It's what I would say is an updated older home. So people who like that, the charm and character of an older home, but some of the modern amenities, this would be a good place for you. 
I mean, this is one of my cans. I don't typically go with the deal of the month of the buyer, but I was I was weighing it here. Hmm. I was giving it some thought. I All think right. the train is a, is always a factor on Garden Street. Not so much. I mean, because it's a stop, so it's a little noisier when it's coming to a stop. Um, it's right near the the uh, the Needham uh, you know, downtown. The, yeah, the downtown stop. Yep. So that's a factor. All right. Speaking of uh, potential deals of the month, we now have 298 Brookline Street, which is my deal of the month, Brian. Right? Sure is, Rob. For the seller. You know, this didn't jump off the page, I would say. And for the sake of full disclosure, while I saw the plans, obviously saw the listing and know people who were in the house, I was actually never in the house myself. Okay. But I'm glad I, you're up front with that. Well, you know, why not? But you're talking about, you know, 3,400 square feet, 350 of those square feet are in the basement. So it's really 3,000. My understanding, a little bit of a choppier layout. You're on Brookline. It's a busier road. It's, it's not a shaped lot. It's not shaped lot. It's not new construction. It's reno it's a renovation, and I would say a pretty hefty renovation. But one two seven two seven five zero seems seems a little high for this house. Do you think that there was something? It was, it was offered at one two four nine, and it closes at one two seven two seven fifty. Right. Upgrades. Yeah, like was was an attic finished? Was were there? There, there had to have been something of value. Um, unless there was a bidding war, which, but you're on the market for 60 days, it's, it's unlikely that that's the case. Right. Well, if anybody wants to present that, maybe I'll, you know, change it okay. my deal of the month. I'm, I'm, I'm open. I'll retro if I have to okay. on my deal yeah, of the month. Yeah, we can revisit this at a, at a future date. Right. But uh, for now, for October, that's my deal of the month. Right. And I'm right there with you, Rob. Yeah. What do we got next up, Ryan? 82 Grosvenor Road. 82 Grosvenor Road is our next house that we're going to go over. This one sells for 139. It's halfway, I would say, between Broadmeadow and Greendale. Yep, this is another home in the in sort of the, the new construction spec market sweet spot, which is that kind of that high 13 price range. Mm -hmm. You know, you're getting in the you know, the 4000s in your square footage, usually a finished basement or attic. When you're in the market for one of these homes, you're really paying attention to how they're finished. And so that you the danger that you run into is you don't want to just buy square footage. Because when you look at these houses on paper, uh, a lot of them are very similar. But there, when you walk through them, you can easily sort of distinguish, you know, the the, the top of the line from the you know the middle of the line. And you want to look for those features and the, the quality. Um, delve into things like what type of heating system is it? You know, what the windows? How is it insulated? You know, you really want to look into these things that aren't necessarily abundantly clear as you're walking through, but become very abundantly clear once you've taken ownership of the house and you're finding that you, you know, may not have gotten what you what you thought you did. And I'm not suggesting that here. I'm just saying that's what you are doing when you look, because there is a lot of new construction to choose from and there's a lot of different builders. So you want to really kind of get comfortable with the package. So taking that and kind of bringing it to, to another level. So 82 Grosvenor, if we, if we go back and we're looking at that now. So that sells for 139. Builder pays 511 for this lot. Okay, now if we transition into the next listing, which is 169 Laurel, essentially sells for the same price, mm -hmm. $7,000 more. Builder pays 575 for this one, right? So you have a thinner margin, mm -hmm. presumably, because mm -hmm. ultimately you're looking at the same house in terms of specs. They're both five beds. They're both four and a half baths. Square footage is comparable for sure. Uh, Laurel's a little larger. Laurel's, uh, yeah, well, no, but that's including basement space, whereas Grosvenor was not. I see. So they're both probably right around 5,000. Yep. So here's my question for you. Okay. And think about it. Don't just say it. You have a hundred people, random Needham residents, and you say you can live on Grosvenor or you can live on Laurel. What number of the hundred re uh, Needham residents would say they'd rather live on Laurel? I've got my number. You got a hundred Needham residents. You'd rather live on Laurel or live on Grosvenor? What number say they'd rather live on Laurel? See, I know Rob just wants a number for me, but there's there's a one big elephant in the room that to that to that question is, is it's the school. They're two, two different school districts. So these people coming in yes. who don't have kids, obviously kids in right. the school, where, what's a better location? Yes. I'm thinking more people say Laurel. I'll go with 60 Laurel simply due to the train. That's That was going to be my number. We are going to say at the same time and then we would have hit the Oh, but you, you didn't tell me that. I said, hold on, don't say oh, it out loud. Oh, sorry. I thought All you right. said think about it for 60. a minute. 60. Oh my God, I said the same number. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, Laurel has a slope to the rear, if you remember. Right. Yep. Um, but that Laurel Drive is a great spot. Yep. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a street you can play on. Definitely. Definitely. So, I, I like the Laurel, I like the Laurel 
purchased it. I'm curious to see what they did with that lot because it is it was heavily sloped to the rear. 39 Thurston Lane is next up. This was a uh, new construction, Ryan, back way back in 2012. <laughs> the old days. Yeah, gosh, things were so much simpler back then. Right, this one, oh, go ahead. I was gonna say six baths. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot. It is. It is. Because you have finished basement and attic. So you have bath in each each of those spaces. All right. This one took a little while to sell when it was done. And it took a little while this time, too, with a pretty significant price drop. And I think a lot of it had to do with the layout. And you remember this one was a little choppy on the first floor. A lot of small rooms as opposed to the big open spaces that people are clamoring for these days in new construction. Cul-de-sac, though, Ryan. It is a cul-de-sac. Nice spot. Yeah, it was, it's kind of a carved out little, little yeah. street there. Mm -hmm. Uh, as you said, living space includes the finished basement and uh, attic as well. 73 Stonecrest, it's big seller time. This is a big seller. I mean, you want to talk big seller? Yeah. Head over to 73 Stonecrest Drive. Someone's going to drop a $2.6 million big seller on you. Bam. Take but that. But you know what's even more impressive than the, the sale price? The decorations? <laughs> but, I mean, the days on market. Yeah. I mean, five yeah. I mean, five days? Yeah, That's crazy. It's well done, broker. I mean, you look at so the market right now and sort of what is contributing to the, as we'll see in the market snapshot, we have our average days on market for what's on the market at 135, which is, you know, two plus times what the typical churn rate is. Yep. And it's, it's a lot of it is new construction and higher end sale prices, you know, in the right. high one points in the twos. This one said, all right, the heck with that. I'm going to go out there, drop a 2.599 price tag on you, and I'm going to sell this thing in five days. And this house is very impressive. I mean, it has not only size. I mean, obviously, square footage is important when you're in this price point. This is 7,200 square feet. But the high-end finishes, you know, the steam showers, the radiant floors, the, the automated climate control, the gym, you know, all the sound system, and everything that, that you would want in amenities-wise in a, in a property like this. So, nice house. Yes, and it sold for $1.85 million back in 2004. And we're now going to roll things up here with the market snapshot, take a look at what the market is looking like as of November 3rd, 2014. And um, why don't we start at the top and work our way down, Ryan. 97 active single-family listings. That number was, I thought that number was going to be a little lower, didn't you? Yeah, I mean... Usually that number doesn't go up. I'm sorry, not to cut you no, off. No, go ahead. Usually it doesn't go up in November. Right. I would think usually we're winding things down. No, that's a that's an interesting interesting observation. And I think contributing to it is, is like I mentioned, there's, there's 58 homes on the market right now over 1.3. Wow. That's a lot. And that 22, is. only 22 under 800. And of those 22, there's, I would say there's only five that aren't on a two lines busy street. So they're... So they're the top, the top end of the market is what is, is available right now. There's still, we say the market's softening. If you throw something on in the sevens that's, 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 that's well-priced in a good location, it's gone tomorrow. I probably tell that to people every two weeks. I'm telling that to somebody, I feel like. Right. Single-family homes under agreement 53, so we're down there. I, you hate to see one going in, uh, up and one going down. Right. And then average listing price, one three. It's just one thing I want to point out here on the average list price per square foot, 334. Mm. So that number right there was the same last month. Okay. So this month and last month, that would be basically November and October, 334. It's the lowest it's been for the entire year. So in my opinion, right now, the average sales price, we're talking about how it's through the roof. It's 360 per square foot, the average sales price. Mm. But our average list price right now is 334. So that tells me going forward, our average sales price is going to be down Could come this down. year. Could, yep. Uh, if people want to call, ask us any questions, they are thinking of listing their home, they want to know what their home is worth, Ryan, how do they reach us? Uh, give us a call, 781-707-6564. Or you can email us Great. at rob.ryan at hawthornre.com. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Rob. That will do it for this month's edition of What's My House Worth? Thanks for joining us. We're going to see you again real soon, probably well, maybe before, maybe after Thanksgiving, depending on when you watch the show. All right. Take care, everybody.